So in this part, uh, it's just a demonstration where I will open to you an example of a file. This uh, file uh, you don't have on your machine. Okay, it's a file that I created and I manipulated uh, on my computer. Uh, it's an existing file. Uh, you you might find this on your samples file, but there is some uh, some small modification in this file. So if you want a copy later of this file, I can send to you by mail. So let's see now just uh, this demonstration you to to understand how you can model a pollutant in a simulation. So in this file, we have two scenarios. In the first scenario, um, there is uh, no information regarding pollutant. Okay, And in the second scenario, the water quality, there is a pollutant. So running the scenario comparison, Comparing these two scenarios, we have a difference in the water quality alternative. Running the report for this alternative, there is a difference at the manhole number four. The number four, there is no pollute, pollutograph, and in the second alternative, there is a pollutograph. Okay, so it can show to us that there is a two scenarios, one scenario with no pollutant and a second scenario with pollutant at the node 4. So the first thing to do is to create your pollutant. The pollutant is created in the components menu, swim next stations, pollutants. So we can see here that was created a chromium. It's a pollutant that have no decay coefficient and no uh, groundwater concentration and no rain concentration. So it's a pollutant that will enter uh, with no decay coefficient. So it's a it's a very uh, critical pollutant. And the second step is to create the pollutograph. The pollutograph, it's also available inside the swing extensions menu. So this is how the chromium will enter at the manhole number four by the time. So it's a curve the 24 hour curve that has a peak number at 10 hours from the beginning. So after defining the pollutograph and the pollutant, you can go to the element that will receive <clears throat> the pollutograph and from the through the properties there is a attribute called pollutograph collection this attribute is located under the group water quality this naming bold help us to understand in which alternative it's placed the element so it's an alternative called water quality. So in this attribute, you just need to create a new line and put your pollutograph. It's a quite simple process. In this scenario, we are already uh, using a calculation options defined to use the explicit solver. Okay. After running 
a scenario with the explicit solver it will calculate also using the Sanvenan equations in this um, solver we also have the continuity error but here it's um, it's presented by not converging okay so if it is not converging it's the same the same explanation of the continuity error in the implicit solver so after running this to check how this pollutant goes by the system you can now click in any element so if the pollutant enters in the node number four you can see that we have a gravity conduit that enters in a wet in a wet well number two and we have a pressure line that drains to the node two and then goes directly to the outfall one so selecting the outfall one having a water quality simulation in these elements we have at the results an attribute called pollutant collection selecting the ellipsis we have the result so this is the uh, let's say the difference between a regular hydraulic calculation and a water quality calculation the result is extracted by the element using the co pollutant collection attribute if you go to the manhole number one we also have the pollutant graph it will be zero because there is no influence of the pollutant in the node number four If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.